The financial crisis facing Magic the Gathering is only just beginning. Most players are not aware of how bad the financial crisis is in the world of Magic the Gathering right now. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. We're only 135 subscribers away from hitting 15,000. I want to take this chance to thank everyone who's hitting that subscribe button, making sure they're watching my content each and every day, giving the videos a thumbs up, putting comments in the comment section, and of course, my Patreon members, the guys who are financing this channel and making everything possible. Thanks again, everyone, for being there. Each and every one of you guys, this is amazing, and I can't wait to see how far we can take things. A lot of people in the last month have been asking for a video kind of going over a financial overview of Magic the Gathering, how things are going out there. I do cover a lot of financial stuff. I do gather a lot of data. A lot of you guys know that. So I'm just going to let you know what I think is happening out there, but we're going to go over what is definitely happening, and that is a financial crisis. We are in we are in trouble in Magic right now. Not the game itself. The game is a beautiful thing. But anyone who is looking at the financial side of the cards has reason to worry. I'm going to explain why. Let me take a look at the first panel here and show you guys something. What causes a financial crisis? A financial crisis may have multiple causes. Generally, a crisis can occur if institutions or assets are overvalued. And this can be exacerbated by irrational or herd-like investor behavior. For example, a rapid string of sell-offs can result in lower asset prices, prompting individuals to dump assets or make large saving withdrawals when a bank's failure is rumored. Okay, forget about a bank failure. Put Hasbro in there. Hasbro failure. Wizards of the Coast failure. The lack of confidence from a herd-like behavior, which could be a group of investors or a group of players from Magic the Gathering. That is what is happening right now. Now, in, in a kind of crisis like this, there's usually a cause, a catalyst that gets the ball rolling, and that is the M30. That is the first stone that caused the avalanche that is happening right now. Now, when that avalanche fell, it started with this whole spirit of the reserve list, price sensitive players, and the memes just kept going. And when sealed products not selling, stores get caught on the hook, right? And then you start having a breakdown of the system itself, the ecosystem. When everyone tries to withdraw from a bank, the bank doesn't have that kind of liquidity and banks can fail. Remember that movie, The Big Short? Remember what happened? Housing crisis, CDOs and all that crazy stuff. That's what we're talking about when you're thinking of a financial crisis. Now, the difference in, in a magic crisis versus, say, what's happening with um, cryptocurrency stuff like FTX and all those guys, they don't produce anything. Okay, they, they don't actually create an asset like magic does. Magic's asset is the cards themselves. You have something at the end. And as long as you've bought and paid for your cards and haven't leveraged them on a credit card, a lot of us can weather the storm if you've already paid cash for them and you're in a solid financial situation. Remember, I've always told you guys, never hurt family or friends. You don't put anything on credit cards. You always pay your bills first. Magic is a luxury, not an essential. So then you have that breakdown. And when the breakdown happens, when people stopped buying sealed because they had a lack of confidence in sealed product due to overprinting, the over evaluation of a product, that's what we're going through. And that leads a lot of people to jump ship. We talked about that last month when more players kept liquidating their assets and getting out of the game entirely, leaving while other players left buying sealed stuff and they jumped only into singles. And some people left sealed and singles and went to the blue chip, which is the reserve list. And they went to the reserve list cards only. And they said, I am never leaving my playground again. I like the reserve list. I'm staying right here. Some people said, I'm never leaving singles again. I'm staying right here. But I didn't hear anyone. And I still have it in my emails and conversations with players, people on my Patreon, Discord. There are people still buying sealed but it's no one is to the degree they were before. That confidence is so badly shaken 
that the crisis is going to be ongoing for a very long time because the Hasbro Wizard ship is very slow to adjust. And, and let me explain. If we look at the actual Investopedia comment on a financial crisis, it's as follows. The financial crisis can be segmented into three stages. Begin with the launch of the crisis, financial systems fail, generally caused by system and regulatory failures, institutional mismanagement of finances, and more. The next stage involves the breakdown of the financial system with financial obligations, businesses, and consumers unable to meet obligations. Finally, assets decrease in value and the overall level of debt increases. People forget that in 2019, Hasbro went out and bought E1 Entertainment. They bought a movie studio for $4 billion. And then what happens? COVID comes along and shuts everything down which means they are unable to make money from that particular asset class and they lean more heavily on Magic the Gathering. Remember Thrones of Eldraine? We had our collector boxes starting around then because they knew they had to draw a greater amount of revenue from other existing IPs they controlled because they are not able to get money right now out of E1. And now a couple years later, look, they're trying to sell pieces of it off. It's a very interesting thing to watch happen when an unintended consequence meets a wall and the wall is the players because this financial crisis is not over yet because of the lack of faith in the system right now players are not buying the sealed product like they used to they're seeking out things like singles reserve list cards things that wizards does not directly control yet but if you think they're not going to delve into the singles market eventually secret layer singles supreme secret layers where it's one card they charge like 20 25 bucks Trust me, they will get there. Things will get worse before they get better. Because remember, a company like Hasbro Wizards of the Coast, it's a 200-story building. And right now, only the first through 10th floors are on fire. They don't smell smoke. They don't see anything wrong right now. Now, that's my opinion of what I think is happening on the financial side, the crisis we're in. But it's not all doom and gloom. As, as bad as I'm making it sound, guys, it is not all doom and gloom. Because there's the flip side of all this. A lot of people ask for my opinions. And that's what I'm giving you guys. This is strictly my opinion on how I see things happening. Do I want to dive right now into sealed boxes? No, I don't. Will there be money to be made there later? Yes, there will. Allow me to explain. The reason I'm not diving in to buy lots of sealed boxes right now is because I know... It'll take an extra number of years for this crisis that we're in right now to resolve itself. I recognize instead of a five to seven, nine year window to double your money on a, on a magic box that's sealed, it's now going to take 15 years. It's going to take an extra half decade to start gaining momentum because we have to clear up what's happened. The new regulatory measures, if they ever come in, will come later. And that will take time to reorient a player base to understand that they've made the corrections necessary. And in those years that these products are out there, they will still be there on a store shelf. So I have no need to tie up my capital in a dead asset that may be worth money later, but I don't have to buy it now. I can afford to let other people carry those costs and buy it later on, saving myself time, effort, and cash flow. That's how I'm using my time right now. You can take that money and invest it in, in actual like stocks and bonds right now here in Canada. I put it into a TFSA, but I buy individual stocks that are paying like 6-7% right now. I can take this time to build that cash flow up for later on. Go back and buy those assets. Just because I'm not buying now doesn't mean I'm not going to buy later. And that's the great thing about having a little forethought and planning things out in advance. There's a reason you work really hard in life to try to get ahead. And when you're down here and you want to be up here, it's five times harder than most people realize. So I'm not willing to tie up money like that. I've got to find other ways to work that wheel and make the money I do make work for me. There's a reason why I work two, three jobs. I'm trying to invest money, put money away, and buy money for Magic the Gathering, as well as put a roof over my family's head. It's interesting. It's fascinating these kind of situations come up when people think like you've turned your back on stuff when you haven't. 
And I think it's this opportunity we take right now so I can explain where I'm coming from. A product like Double Masters 2022. Great product, good cards inside, good selection of cards. Went over very well. This will be a dead asset for a very long time. But it will have value. There will be collectors out there who want these. There will be investors out there who want these, but not now. Anyone now is shopping for a deal. They want things on the low because the market is down. That's what happens in a market like this, right? Everything is going to, you know what, in a handbasket and nobody wants to touch it. And those that have cash and can afford to do it are looking for those who are so desperate to sell to get some liquidity out, they're losing 50, 60, 70% of the value of what they're trading or selling in. I'm not willing to go there. I have made sure that I've paid for everything you see in the background here. Everything's already paid for, bought and done. The things I give away to my patrons, bought and paid for. I make sure I don't carry credit card debt. I make sure I put that stuff away the month I buy, if possible. Some magic cards we've talked about, like Gaia's Cradle and stuff, where you guys helped me out on the channel, it took time to get those done. But a crisis like this, it doesn't just go away. Because what they need to do to make it go away, they're not willing to do right now. So I will sit back. I will make my money work for me. I will recommend you guys do the same thing. Find solid safe havens for your cash flow. Put it to work for you. The magic cards are still going to be there. Buy the singles you want to buy. Enjoy the game. Play some kitchen table magic. Talk about the craziness going on in magic right now. And relax. Because the strongest hands are the ones that can weather the storm to get through all this. Guys like the Taco King will talk about this. I gave, he'll say, I gave you warnings. I told you this guy, this stuff was coming. Like you gotta, you gotta be aware. You've always got to take care of you and your family first and worry about this kind of stuff later. Because this kind of stuff you should pay for in cash when you have money available. You don't want things leveraged. You don't want to lose the assets you've worked so hard to gain. And since I'm not willing to sit on dead money for the next 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, as this all sorts itself out, and hey, it could recover a lot faster. I don't control the market or tell it what to do. It's going to do what it's going to do. It's just going to happen. It'll be slow increments. It'll go from being negative to slowly climb up to like, then you're going sideways and then it'll slowly gain. That's how things work. And that's why you're not seeing a loss of things like the reserve list cards. They're not dumping in value other than low end reserve list cards because people couldn't hold on. I had a few emails of people trying to sell me low end reserve list cards, which I don't have the cash to pay for. I pointed them in the right direction of people who may want. That's the best I could do. I don't have that kind of cash flow, guys. But I appreciate you guys emailing me and letting me know what's going on. Because when you over leverage on credit cards, when you can't pay for it in cash, you get caught like this sometimes. And it's horrible to think about. So that's where I'm coming from, everyone. This is my opinion on things. I'm not tying up actual cash flow on assets. They're going to take a very long time to recuperate. But I still think they have value. I still think this will all kind of turn itself around the long run. So that's the good news for me because I can sit back and relax now. We can talk about this in the comments section and we can see where this crazy market's going to go because the crisis ain't done. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And if you were really smart at planning your stuff out, you can still kick back, enjoy the game and watch what happens. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Thanks for being here. Looking forward to seeing those comments in the comments section. Let the party begin. Hey guys, a big shout to all the fantastic patrons out there. Thanks again for showing that support for my channel. Really means a lot to me, guys. Each and every day, you all being there supporting me. Thanks again. You rock, and we'll see you soon. So here we are at the end. And I thought I would answer a couple of questions that I got multiple emails on. I assume they're from different email people. They had different email addresses. Moxman, do you believe sealed boxes will still hold value in the future? As explained in the video, I absolutely do. I just think the turnover rate to get value for your box will take a much longer time due to inflation, player means, and capability of paying for these kind of boxes, and the current state of the market. I think we're looking at a 10 to 15 year window. We look a very long way, okay? Uh, Moxman, do I believe low end reserve list cards are now worthless and shouldn't be collected? No. Um, I do believe I should still be collecting them. I think everyone should too. It's very cheap to get them. It's never been a better price. And if you're trying to build collections, like say one of every reserve list card, why not get them when they're like next to worthless? 
I'm not talking about the playability of a card, but sometimes it's just the artwork, just the ability to say you have reserve list cards. And when they're really cheap like this, what's wrong with spending 20 bucks, if you have the means, to buy a whole bunch of like 50 cent $1 cards? Why not? And if any of those cards spike or if anything breaks them later on in Magic's history, you come out really far ahead. It's happened before, it's going to happen again. Um, Moxman, can you give me a breakdown of how you... Okay, how I'm... Okay, how I make money in Magic. I really don't make money in Magic right now. Um, because I run this YouTube channel, I generally keep and collect the cards I get. Um, I play with them. I used to flip a lot more on platforms like um, um, eBay, local game stores, trading, buying, selling to stores. I did a lot of that and I did very well, okay? Now, I don't do that anymore because this channel, I would rather give the cost advantage to patrons and people on my channel than I would a local LGS and stuff like that or shipping them with risks over eBay, not to mention the taxes that are charged now. So I would prefer to do it the way I do it now where I may not make really any money money on it, but at the same time, I have a better fun time doing it and my patrons have a better fun time and so the people viewing the channel. That makes sense? And then the last question, Moxman, are you part of the RCMP? No. I'm not part of the RCMP, but I do not talk about my job as a general rule. I have to keep them separate as people know, but no, I am not in law enforcement. How about that? So there you go, guys. Answered some questions, had a good time doing it. But yes, on the investment side of things, things are crazy right now, but they will calm down in the future. I still believe that. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Have an awesome one. I'll see you all later.